Fort Collins and vicinity. My name is Mark Eversall and I'm the principal of Fort Collins High School and today uh, we're going to have a half hour program that's dedicated to living history. Uh, the uh, history that we'll be talking about is Fort Collins High School. The school is, uh, is uh, exactly 120 years old as of this year. It was built in 1889 and, uh, and that was at the, the Franklin grade school over on Howes and Mountain. It's where the old Steeles building used to be. And uh, the building, uh, the Fort Collins High School has actually been in four different locations. Uh, of course, ultimately ending up at um, the 3400 Lambkin Way, which is 3400 Timberline at Fort Collins. Um, the second building that, um, that we occupied was in 1903 and it cost all of $35,000 and it was uh, currently where the Lincoln Center is today. The third building was at, um, on, uh, I think it was 1400 uh, Remington mm -hmm. Street, and uh, that was actually built in 1926. This is a school that is rich in tradition, as our guests will um, convey, to, uh, convey that to you very quickly. The first graduating class was in 1891, and it had all of five students. And uh, last year's graduating class had a total of 440. The number of students that have actually graduated from Fort Collins High School is over 26,000. So we're, we've got a lot of individuals that have come up through the ranks, gone through the school, and are, they're very proud to be what we call Lampkins. Today we have a, a guest, a panel uh, of four, and they represent different decades. Uh, all the way from the 40s, the 60s, the 80s, and we have a current student, uh, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves right now. So, Marion, welcome. I'm Marion Pike. I graduated from Fort Collins High in 1947, and uh, we, we were uh, probably the best class, but, <laughs> but I, I won't say that for sure. But we did have three or four state championships while, we were in school, while I was in school. And um, Mark, I hate to tell you, but Fort Collins, the one on Remington, was built in 1924. Oh, <laughs> I was given bad information. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Hickey Laycock, and I graduated in 1967 from the building on 1400 Remington Street. Um, loved that building, but I also have enjoyed then teaching at the new building, taught there for 23 years, I believe, and was proud to have both of my children graduate from Fort Collins High School, one in 1996 and the other one just more recently in 2000, I can't remember now, mm -hmm. <laughs> 2003, I think, yes, 2003. Hi, my name is Elaine Holmes and I am a graduate of the class of 1988. I also graduated from what I affectionately call the old school um, on uh, 1400 Remington. Um, I've had the pleasure of being at the new school since its opening day. I student taught there in 1995 and I have been employed there as a social studies teacher since um, 1997. Um, I'm also very proud to have a, gra a graduate of Fort Collins High School. My son Nick graduated in 2008. So. Um, there's, a, there's a deep family tradition that runs with being a Lampkin. It's, it's, uh, we, we like to have generations of us go through there. And I am Alex Vazquez. Um, I am currently, <clears throat> I'm currently a senior at Fort Collins High School over at a 3400 Lampkin Way. And I will be a graduate of this year's class, uh, the class of 2009. Um, I've had an amazing time at FCHS. I wouldn't have it any other way. And I continue to have an absolutely awesome time there. Um, yeah, definitely. Well, welcome panel. We appreciate you being here today, and especially for a few of you on short notice. Um, the first question I'd like to ask is, what, what was school like back when you were in school? And uh, this will probably kind of take us 20 year increments, but that, that's exactly why we're here. We're, Going to learn a little bit about history. What was school like, Mary? Mark, school was fun when we were in school, but we learned a lot too. Susie Quick was our English teacher, and I'll tell you, when you had Susie Quick for an English teacher, you learned English. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we had Dan Beatty, 
on on and and uh, T. R. Blevins, all these people. Uh, and they've they've all been had they, schools oh yeah, named oh after yes. them. Oh, they've had and also Katie Bowder, mm. and all these people that they were teachers when I was in school. And so I feel very 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 fortunate that uh, I was in, at Port Collins High at that time. One of the chief differences I see, just just viewing it overall is that the girls all wore dresses to school. Hmm. We were not allowed to wear any kind of slacks or blue jeans or anything like that. That's just, if you were just glancing sure. at the school. Yeah, great. <clears throat> well, I went to Fort Collins High in the 60s, and when I started in 1965, I, I think school was still kind of a carryover from the naive 50s. And by the time I graduated in 67, uh, I had classmates who were going off to the Vietnam War, and things were a little bit more serious with that. I guess maybe I became a teacher because I loved school. I loved going to Fort Collins High School. I think we started being able to wear slacks by my senior year, but my sophomore year, I remember that if they thought our skirts were too short, they would make us kneel down, and at the end of the skirt, the hem did not touch the floor. We actually had to go home. And we weren't allowed to wear culottes either, uh, <coughs> because that was mm -hmm. too much like pants. Um, I remember going to classes, but mostly I remember the fun of the activities. We had a booster club, in fact, I was at an, um, uh, like a garage in a state sale this weekend and I saw this purple skirt look like it was wool hanging in the closet and I went over to it and there was one of our booster uniforms oh, from wow. the 1960s and then I found out that it was Mary Colopy's grandmother's house mm -hmm. and that was Mary Colopy's. She was a year or two younger than I was. It was her uniform and we had a wool skirt again that came down to the knees we had a vest and it had the old prancing lampkin on mm -hmm. the front. And we also, sh this wasn't there, but we wore a white blazer and we had a, a lampkin logo. We had a special section that we sat in at the uh, football and basketball games. And we only had boy sports back then. Mm -hmm. Girls, you just played intramurals with other girls within the school. So. Um, so every Friday night was always a, a football or a basketball game, and if you were in the booster club, which most of us were, then we all sat to, together and rooted the, the team on. And there were just, there were all kinds of activities because most people, most students didn't work. Uh, school was their job back then. And now I think so many students are also working that it's harder to be involved in too many activities, but it was lots of fun. I loved it. The 1980s were very different from your two's experiences. <laughs> um, you know, I, I went there through 85 through 88. Um, it was a time of great cultural change. There was loud music, and I was a kind of a, well, not kind of, I was a punk rock girl. I had a blue mohawk my senior year. So things were quite a bit different as far as the dress code. Um, I remember a lot of the activities as well, and it, I think it's really important today and um, in yesteryear that we connected through activities. I I loved my academic experience. I got a top-notch education at Fort Collins High School, which um, definitely benefited me in college, and I do remember several very influential teachers that really altered the course of my life. I became a history teacher because of them. But I do remember a lot of the outside activities as well. I was very active in, in the theater, um, and that's where I connected and was able to be in the plays and, and vaudeville, which is a very long-standing tradition at Fort mm -hmm. Collins High School. It's a variety show that um, we put on every year, and I remember that very vividly. Um, of course, there were sports. The school was very full at, at, when I graduated. There was about 1,700 kids at Fort Collins mm -hmm. High School, um, and that's at the old school. So we were all packed <coughs> in, and you got to know everybody. The old school really lent to um, a different type of feel than there is at, at our school, and it's like you couldn't avoid each other. So, you know, um, I do remember a lot of cliques. There were pretty pronounced cliques in the 1980s. There was like the, definitely the jocks, and then the metalheads, and then the punk rock kids and then like the band geeks and I mean it was just like everybody was to their own crew and I don't see that as much today either it's a lot more everybody just hangs with everybody so but it was a great experience and I had ups and downs there but um 
I knew I was safe. I knew I was safe at Fort Collins High School, and that's a, a feeling that I cherish. Well, um, being at school, being at Fort Collins High School today, I can, uh, I can agree with a lot of the things that Ms. Holmes says. Um, where uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things was that, um, that everybody is sort of, uh, as opposed to the 80s where everybody was, you know, in their, in their very pronounced cliques and didn't really explore, you know, meet, meet other people or things like that. I feel like in our school right now, that's not the case, um, at, least, at least not as much, perhaps, as it used to be. Um, I personally like to think that I try to get to know uh, a whole variety of people in the school, and I find it very easy to do so in our school environment, which is absolutely excellent. Um, academically, I'm, I'm, I, I also am getting a really great education, a lot of really great teachers, Mrs. Holmes being one of them, of course. Um, <laughs> I, had her, uh, I was in her um, psychology class last year, and I had a really great time there. Um, lots of opportunities to sort of explore um, any anything I'm interested in, I have I, I have the time and the uh, the sort of the f the free space to to map my schedule to the the way I like, which is a really great opportunity. Um, activities wise, um, I also really feel like I I have a place in the groups that I'm in, um, where I'm I'm also a, a senior peer counselor. That's that's a really great group to be in again because I get to meet everybody through that way and I sort of feel an identity with that group of people, a, a very positive identity. Um, and I, I'm also involved in, in theater this year. This is the first year that I've done theater and I kind of wish I did it a little bit more because I'm having an awesome time <coughs> putting together The Wizard of Oz now for our spring musical. Perfect. Uh, a couple of questions that I have for you, uh, and I'll just put, maybe you can just kind of mix it up in a group if, if that's okay, uh, Marion. Where did the name Lambkin come from? There's, <laughs> there's got to be some history behind that, and, and it's been around for a long time, and I don't think we're going to be changing it anytime soon, but... Uh, some uh, people think, a lot of the students think that we're Lambkins because we're baby rams. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the case. We were lambkins long before CSU were rams. They, they were just Aggies for a while, weren't they? Were they were Aggies okay. for years. Um, back when Coach Scott, who was the first uh, coach at Fort Collins High, um, he had a math class and he <clears throat> thought he should have um, a name for our, our school, our teams, you know. And he, so he approached the class and he said, what do you think we ought to call ourselves? And uh, somebody in the back of the room, and my husband, Doc Pike, tried to find out who it was, and Coach Scott couldn't remember who it was, unfortunately. Anyway, um, he, and this person stood up and said, I think we should call ourselves Lampkins. And Coach Scott said, why Lampkins? Because we are the biggest sheep pro um, producing area in, in the world right now all around Fort Collins and so I think we should call ourselves Lampkins just as the Steelers call themselves Steelers because they were steelmen and so forth and, and that was the way they did it in those days. Before we were Lampkins sometimes they refer in, in the paper calling us beet diggers because there was a lot of beet fields around here. Mm or farmers, but the Lampkins stuck, thank heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And as far as other traditions uh, that, you, that you remember fondly um, in our building? You know, I, I've been told the, the pillars have some significance. Um, our tower has mm -hmm. some significance. Can anyone elaborate on, on those as well? With the tower, if you listen to the alma mater, it lights our way, and the pillars are firmly standing, and uh, and so uh, that is something that we carry on from generation to generation. I've had my three children went to Fort Collins High, and three of my grandchildren have gone to Fort Collins High. Your husband? And my husband graduated with me in 1947, and um, he, when we came back to town, he felt there should be more information about our school than there has been in the past. And so he 
wrote this book. Mm-hmm. Called The Home of the Champions. Home of the Champions. And that is also a moniker we got in 19, I think it was 22, I'd have to look at my notes, because he would have known, but I don't know as well. Um, in 1922, when we got our first state championship, um, we got, we picked up that, that um, moniker. Mm-hmm. Home, <laughs> uh, like home of the champion. We have 62 state championships currently. Yes, yes. So uh, I could have dressed up only the columns, you know, <laughs> um, from the old school. And, and I'm so grateful for the use of how the building's being utilized today by the, the performing arts of CSU. Oh, yes. And I'm so grateful that building has been refurbished to, to its beauty. But I can tell you that when you walked through those front doors at Fort Collins High School when I was a student there, you knew you were going to school. And whether that was a good or a bad thing, you know, but there was that real sense, like I had mentioned, I said the word security. Um, I just, there was the safety when you go to those columns. And, and for a long time I taught classical humanities and I would make the students as, as an assignment, they would have to go visit my school and they'd have to go put their hands on those pillars to get, really get a feel for that. Mm. Um, and that was a, a neat wow. feeling and it, architecturally it's such a beautiful, beautiful building. And um, we definitely have brought some of those elements to our our school and I like to point those out to our students but um, it was it was a neat tradition that I mean you just walk through and and um, it was it was a different feel so mm-hmm. um, and one of the things I'd actually like to point out when you're talking about traditions the first thing that popped in my mind was um, I and I'm not sure this is this is at the new school every every Friday we have the acapella mm-hmm. choir singing our alma mater um, on the uh, on the stairwell um, at the end of seventh hour every Friday, and that's 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 basically when when I think of when I think of tradition and our class, that's really what 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 sticks in my mind is how everybody <clears throat> everybody gets to leave their class a little bit early and all join together outside that that hallway and watch them all sing. It's a very unifying thing and. We did that when I was in school, yeah. and we did that back in the 60s yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the tower, um, I don't know if this is something I should admit or not, but uh, mm-hmm. it used to be a challenge to try to sneak up to the tower after school hours and sign your name up on one of the planks up there, and usually it was through drama classes. Mm -hmm. We also had vaudeville back Mm -hmm. in the 60s and we had a ballad club so we would sing, have concerts where we sang. And so when you're practicing late at night there was actually a drop down ladder and you could climb up and it got so dangerous as the building got old that they actually padlocked that. So I'm not sure when what class was the last class to be able to do that, but I know my name's up there from the 60s. My name's up there too. Is your name up there, Mary? Yes. I, I might tell you this, how I got up in the tower the first time. Do you think I dare? Oh, well, sure. Okay. Um, I went up after Rifle Club one night. We had Rifle Club when I was in school, and we shot. Rifle Club? There was you a mean, rifle range in the basement. Shot, no, shot we guns? did it in the gym. Oh, they didn't uh, have the rifle range when cool. I was there. Anyway, but uh, yeah, we, we shot um, 22s, and we shot prone, and standing, and kneeling, and learned about gun safety and all that. It was a night, night organization, met once a week, and we just had a great time. We loved it. Well, after Rifle Club one night, we went up to the tower because I had heard that if you went in the boys' bathroom on third floor and took the wooden panel off the wall where the plumbing is, that you could climb the pipes and somebody would cut through the lath up above and you could get up on the ceiling of third floor and walk over to the tower and go right up there. And so my name's up there more than once because I was on stage crew also and in drama. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great. Uh, other fond memories that you have when you were back in school, and in your case, what are some maybe some of your fondest memories currently? Right, right. Of course, I have for the entirety from a sophomore to senior year, um, the entirety of my time at Fort Collins High School, been a member of um, the uh, the daily video announcement staff. 
over at the school that we, we call ourselves Clyde TV. Clyde, of course, is our mascot. Um, and I have, I have a lot of really great memories, sort of, like, I guess the best way to, to, to put why I enjoy it, it's, it's something I, I'm actually hoping to do as a career someday, um, some sort of video producing or television, hopefully something along those lines. And I find it a really great way to, for me to sort of do my part for the rest of the school and um, sort of give back to, to my peers and hopefully, hopefully, you know, entertain them, make them laugh. Um, and I have a lot of really great memories making little features and um, other short films um, to, to air on the show. Um, and it's, it was always one of the greatest feelings to get a really good reception afterward to say, you know, somebody just stopped me in the hallway and say, hey, Alex, that was really great. You know, our class laughed at it. Um, those, those are probably some of the memories I'm, I'm uh, I'm going to keep it, and, and also just my time with the staff in general. A lot of a lot of the fun we have um, with, with Mrs. Dietrich as well, who who runs the uh, who runs the class. Um, I guess it was just you know in a way my little community that I really fit well in, um, and also definitely um, doing the uh, doing the theater productions this year um, as an as an actor. I, I enjoy acting a lot, and it's it's really been a great experience to, to, to just sort of almost be accepted with, with, with open arms into that, into the theater community that I was never really involved in before. And that's, that's another thing that's so great is like not only you can find a community of Fort Collins High School, but even if you show up a little bit late, nobody really cares and they still really accept you. So. Well, you've done a great job. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate everything you've done with Clyde as well because that really is helping with the culture of the school. Uh -huh. And so we really appreciate everything you guys do, of course. Well, thank you. <laughs> and one of my fondest memories also relates to the media, and that was being on the student newspaper, Spilled Ink. I wish I had a more altruistic reason for joining, uh, like Alex, but there was actually two senior boys that I had kind of a crush on. And they, <laughs> they were both on staff, and so I joined as a reporter my sophomore year and then ended up being editor-in-chief my senior year. Wow. Also in the 60s, we had closed campus, so as a reporter on Spilled Ink, you had an excuse to leave campus to go for an interview. And if we happened to stop by the King Food Host that was on College Avenue and get a cheese Frenchie, you know, we were there on school business, right? <laughs> um, and so that was really a, a lot of fun. We also, our senior year, we did this um, series of stories about different musical groups. And so we were able to interview some of the hot groups of the time, like Paul Revere and the Raiders. Have you heard of them, Alex? No, <laughs> no I didn't think so. Chad Mitchell Trio? No. How about uh, back, back Porch Majority? Well, take my word for it. They, they were hot groups back then, and, and we, got to, uh, we got to interview them. And so besides just hanging out with friends, Spilled Ink was really one of my fondest memories. And it was kind of ironic then that when I started teaching at Fort Collins High School in 1981, I was the Spilled Ink advisor, advisor. <laughs> which right. I did for 15 years, I think. Yeah. The other memory that I have that hasn't been brought up is Club Tico. Now, yeah. was Club mm. Tico there when you we were there? Started. In the you started we Club started. Tico. Well, it's, I think it's still called, they it, it is still Club the Tico. name is back to Club Tico. And it's uh, at City Park. And uh, my sophomore year, 1964, was the first year that Poudre High School opened. And so a lot of people who had been friends for years were split with the, with the schools. And so the nice thing about Club Tico is that every Friday and Saturday night it would be open and so students from both high schools, because there were just two at the time, could go and we had live bands, the Furies, that senior guy that I eventually started dating, uh, was the lead guitarist in the Furies that played at Club Tico. And so we danced and you could play pool and we'd have food and, and it was just wonderful and it was a chance to see the students from, the, from Poudre High School as well. And when we have reunions now, 
we still have an FAC with the, the class of 67 from Poudre High School. So mm -hmm. that's been, that's a very fond memory for weekends. We touched on a cappella mm -hmm. uh, before, and I was an a cappella. And I, that's one of the highlights of my high school years. I, I loved being an a cappella. And Katie Bowder was a, a stickler for a good choir. And we used to have as many as 60 people in our choir. It wow. was not big like it used to be, partially because they have a girls choir and a boys choir and so forth. We were all just one. Mm. And um, then I was in band and pet band and that was fun because you got out of school, out of your classes before the games early so you could lead everybody down to the gym, the pet band, down to the gym for pep assembly. Mm -hmm. And that, that was like anything to get out of class, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was, that was a lot of fun. And I was in drama, and drama was very important at that time. Uh, it still is. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we had the junior play and and the um, major play, and we had the vaudeville, mm -hmm. even back in the dark ages when I was in school. <laughs> and I happened to have the lead in the junior play that year, so. Elaine? I definitely think that my memories are mostly of my peers, you know. Um, I, was, I was wonderfully involved in theater, and again, that was my main connection to the school. And, uh, the long nights building sets and just the camaraderie that was built there was is really a high point. My campus was an open campus in the 80s and uh, we would hang out across the street in the gazebo. Oh, and that's yes. where the naughty kids hung out so I was definitely there but um, but it was there was a, a certain kind of camaraderie that was built there so mm -hmm. those some of those peers my friends that I made in high school are still my best friends today. And, and I think that's such a blessing, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and so even though I, sometimes I wasn't as involved, and it's, it was really wonderful to watch my son go through Fort Collins High School because he was so involved. He was on Clyde, he was in theater, mm -hmm. he wrestled, he did so many things um, that I really got a real, I mean, by him being there, it gave me a deeper love of my school, if, if you can believe that. One of the coolest things I'd like to mention, you know, I'd like to get in there is our homecoming assemblies. Mm -hmm. um, and that is one of the highlights every year for me to go to those assemblies. And we'll have people from the class of like 29. And um, I hosted a graduate from the class of 37 this year. And for those people to keep coming home and for them to come into our gym and every year they get a standing ovation, the alumni that come back. and. Um, it's something special. That's not, you know, uh, my aunt uh, works for the Brighton Senior Center and she brought some seniors this year and she's like, this is something unique. This doesn't happen at other places. And, and sometimes I think we take that for granted how blessed we are to have such a great history. Well, and the other thing that we have to mention is our graduation. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to lots of high school graduations and Fort Collins High School has the most beautiful ceremony when the band and the choir sing combine to sing the battle hymn of the <laughs> republic i mean i just get i just get goosebumps i mean there yeah it's uh it's an incredible incredible ceremony and and the the passing of the yellow rose to um, to honor those students who went marrying it was world war 2 right 1942 that they started those flowers I was in school in 42 but they started it in in 42 with the, um, when um, the guys, a lot of guys didn't come back yeah. from the First mm -hmm. World War, or the Second World War, I mean. And um, we were still, it was still going on when I started high school. And so things were curtailed to some degree, but that didn't change the fun that we had. Um, it, was, it was a very warm, welcoming school, and um, Sure, there were there were maybe we called them gangs, but they aren't like gangs nowadays. Um, I had a gang of girls, sixteen of us, that we celebrated our birthdays each month. You know, when, <laughs> but but we did other things with other people. It wasn't though you were just stuck together. Um, I um, I think that probably part of the reason that I remember so much about. Fort Collins High is because my husband and I dated all the way from ninth grade until we he went to CU and I went here. And anyway, and so 
I went to all the football games, went to all the in town and out, all the basketball games in town and out, and it was great fun. And we did. We won state championships in those days, <laughs> and maybe we still do occasionally. <laughs> but there are more, there are more schools that vie for the state championship now. You bet. Right. Well, well, one of the things that I, I wanted to point out is that uh, we definitely have a, a rich tradition in, in this area. And I, I come from a, a school in California, teaching in California school uh, in the Fresno area, um, where I didn't really understand. You talk about the, the homecoming assembly. Uh, I didn't understand that homecoming meant your alums come home. And that's what that whole, that whole assembly is all about. And it wasn't until I got to Fort Collins High School and saw what happened at that particular assembly that that blew me away. And it really then it kind of clicked. Uh, the traditions of our graduation, uh, they don't change. And there's a reason for it. It's because it's, it honors everybody before and everybody that will come next. So I, I, I would agree that our, our graduations are awesome because our, our students take it serious um, and, our, and the community expects us to hold that, uh, that, that high level of excellence. And that's one of the things I'd like to leave, um, uh, leave this session is that at Fort Collins High School, we have a saying where excellence is expected. I would like to thank our guests. Thank you for being here uh, and spending an afternoon with us. And uh, thank you viewers for uh, being patient with us and, and learning a little bit more about Fort Collins and the living history behind Fort Collins High School. Thank you. <laughs>